Now, humans are a tough species and have survived seven major climate crises in the past million years. We tend to forget that every time there's that jump from a glaciation to an interglacial, you get a climate event as fierce and as horrifying as anything that might be occurring in our immediate future. Uh, for example, at those events, the sea level rises 120 meters. That must have had catastrophic effects to low-lying communities around the world uh, at, at that time. We are unlikely to be made extinct by global heating, but we may be cut back in numbers to perhaps a billion or less. We have to survive that global heating and hope that the stresses it imposes will encourage the evolution of a more capable form of human. There are some anthropologists who think the stresses of these previous events are what have made the present humans uh, from the rather more primitive animals that existed a million years ago. Does this mean that there's little, in fact, that we can do to prevent the Earth system moving to a hot, stable state? Perhaps it does, but in no way do I mean that there's nothing that we can do. You probably heard talk of geoengineering. Schemes to put sunshades in space, for example, have been proposed by Lowell Woods. And we know that smoke violently injected into the stratosphere by volcanoes can offset global heating by reflecting sunlight back to space. Pinatubo erupted in 1991, I think it was, and they put something like 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide into stratosphere. And there's good evidence that this stopped global he heating dead in its tracks for three years. So could we mimic this by simply injecting uh, sulfur compounds into the stratosphere? And several scientists have suggested we should. It was first proposed by the Russian scientist Budaiko, and more recently by Robert Dickinson, Paul Crutzen, and Ken Caldera. And the, each of them have different ways of doing it, and they're, but they're all feasible. Uh, more recently, uh, uh, scientist Latham has suggested that artificially generated marine stratus clouds could easily be made over the world's oceans by simply spraying seawater as fine droplets. And of course, this would yield a similar reflection of sunlight back to space. All of these technological fixes have the potential temporarily to halt global heating and could be part of a comprehensive uh, treatment. And we shouldn't forget that they would buy us some much needed time. And I, therefore, I don't think they should be unthinkingly condemned, as some Greens tend to do. But in the long run, they fail to address the source of global heating, which is more people living in the way they do than the Earth can support. Consequently, they are no more a cure of global change than is dialysis uh, when you have kidney failure. But then who would refuse dialysis if death was the alternative? There is a third approach that is less invasive, and that is to think of the Earth as something alive, a self-regulating system, and devise ways to alter the sign of the feedback of one of its great systems from positive to negative. A uh, cool earth has proposed using its funds to pay indigenous peoples to protect their natural forests rather than cutting them down. And another example would be the biosynthesis of food using carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water from the environment. And this would, of course, sequester carbon dioxide in a constructive and profitable way and return farmland to its natural state as an ecosystem. Now, these may be small steps in the right direction, but I don't think that either of them are likely to achieve very much. But by far the most promising approach is to use the power of the biosphere to pump CO2 from the atmosphere and then prevent the carbon it has captured from returning to the air as it normally does. We tend to forget that the plants are pumping something like 55, 550 
1,000 million tonnes of carbon dioxide from the air every year, but 99.9% .9 of it comes back into the air as consumers of various kinds, from microbes to animals, eat it uh, and put it back as CO2. Um, if we could persuade the, the system to just not return 30 uh, thousand million tons, that would be equal to the amount of all of our emissions. So could, could we do it? It might just be possible if we could get farmers to turn all of their waste products of farming, the straw and so on, into charcoal and either plow it back into the fields or bury it in the ocean. We tend to forget that charcoal is nearly as inert as gold. It can be neither biodegraded nor does it oxidize in the atmosphere. It's almost completely inert. So it's a harmless thing that can be put in the soil and it represents the removal of carbon dioxide from the air. Perhaps our first task is to stop thinking blindly that simply reducing our carbon footprint is all we have to do. It isn't. We have to understand that by abrading the skin of our planet, to provide farmland. We've destroyed more than 40% of the Earth's natural ecosystems, and these were what previously served to sustain a stable climate.